Hello and welcome to Mellow Labs. A lot of you are new here because I had a overwhelming amount of people subscribe over January. I think it's something silly like 53 people. Um, hello, uh, I'm Thomas, welcome. So uh, to, to com commemor commemorate, commu com commemorate the people joining me on this weird adventure that is this YouTube channel, I would like to make a subscriber counter. Without further ado, thank you for subscribing, let's go on with the video. To start off with, we need to pick a display, and there are an overwhelming amount of different displays. So first of all, let's go over some criteria. I need it to be low power, 5 volts, perfect. Second, it needs to be quiet. I don't need another thing in my office making noise. I already have to compete with my hard drives and my computers. No, thank you. Third, I want it to be relatively small. I want this to be on top of my monitor where I can always see it, but I also don't want it to be like overwhelming to look at. So with that criteria in mind, let's go over the list that I've prepared on my board. Split flip displays, really cool. The coolness factor like goes, goes up with like every flip. However, surprisingly noisy. No, thank you. Then we've got the flip dot display. Really cool. Not as loud as the uh, split flip display, but they're also quite chunky. Like most of them are pretty big. So uh, we're gonna say no to that. I'd like to give an honorable mention to Mr. Beast's uh, big spinny thingy subscriber count. It's really cool. I think it's just very messy to look at. Nixie tubes, really cool. That they sell them as like new old tech now. You can get a bunch of different like clock displays and stuff. Really cool. Uh, I think it's a little too high powered for what I need it to do. Which leaves us to our final two contenders. We've got the uh, LED matrix display and the seven segment display. Matrix display look really cool, but like when they're like further away, the closer you get to them, you kind of lose the illusion, which leaves the seven segment display as our winner. They are low voltage, they are quiet, they are relatively small and you can turn down the brightness on them so that they're not too distracting. So I'm going to go off, try to find one of these and we'll go from there. I decided on this seven segment display with eight digits and I think this will work perfectly. It comes with some optional pin headers. I am going to solder them on now, but I'm probably going to remove it later. By the way, I'd like to thank my sister for getting me a set of helping hands for Christmas. These have been amazing. With that done, we can now connect it to a microcontroller. For a microcontroller, I'm obviously going to be using this D1 Mini. Uh, I'm probably going to remove these uh, headers later on, just because I want it to have as small of a footprint as possible. But uh, we'll get to that later when I design the casing. So let's connect these up with some jumper wires. I'm using some online documentation and they've already laid out which pins I need to connect. So let's just follow those. Now that we've got that connected, let's go over to the computer and write some code. Right, I have made my tea. Let's get to coding. I'm using a library from Andrew here. Thank you very much, Andrew. It's a library specifically for these screens. Uh, you're gonna need a couple things from here. First of all, you're gonna need the max7290.py and then you're gonna need the uh, seven segment ascii.py. Uh, I've got both of these loaded up here. The first one is, uh, it's kind of just like a translating layer for uh, a binary to, uh, to actual letters. Then we've got this, which is, uh... yeah, I don't know what this does, but it makes the screen go bleep. So let's leave that. So I have two files here. One of them is my boot file, which has my credentials and stuff on it, which I won't show you fingers crossed, but I've got this bit here that's basically redacted. So we start off with the Wi-Fi name and password so it can connect. Uh, then it tries to connect, blah, blah, blah. Uh, then when it connects, it starts a true loop where it uh, takes the API key, which you need to put in yourself. Here is the YouTube Cloud API. Basically, you, uh, you start a new project, then you go over to library, and then you want the, uh, the YouTube uh, data API v3. Uh, yours won't be activated here, but you just click enable, activate, whatever it says. Then you can go back to this screen and you can click create credentials and it will give you an API key. And then you can paste it in here and then we can move on to channel ID. Now your channel ID is not the same as your channel name, 
Don't do what I did and get stuck for half an hour. I'm stupid. Do as I say, not as I do. So where can you find your channel ID? Well, you can go through this, which will give you the, uh, the channel ID, but it makes you solve a, uh, a mathematical equation, the likes of which I have never seen before. Instead, what I did is I opened up my YouTube channel and then went to my YouTube studio and it's right there, it's in the URL. So you can just copy that and paste it in the uh, channel ID bit and that should be good. Then we're using request.get to go to this uh, URL, which will automatically fill in your channel ID and your API key, and that will return us some data. Uh, it returns more data than just your subscriber count, so uh, we'll go over that in a second. But here, I'm just telling it to take just the subscriber count. For debug reasons, I'm printing it in the terminal. I'll get rid of that later. And then we're sending that subscriber count to my show diff, which then uh, goes to the display thing, tells the uh, display what to display, then it waits for uh, 10 minutes, then it clears the display, and then it loops through this bit again. Every 10 minutes, you get an updated number. Uh, you could set this to be a lot less or a lot more, just depends how much you wanna spam your YouTube API. I'm gonna pull up my little uh, security curtain here, and I'm gonna go to my boot file, and I'm going to run it. And that should display the number of subscribers I have. Like I said earlier, you can get a lot more out of these API calls than just the subscriber count. So if I copy this chunk, which is just the raw data that my thing spits out and try to analyze it here. So here's what we're actually getting from each API call. First of all, we're getting the subscriber count. Nice. Second of all, we're getting the, uh, the video count and then we're getting the view count. Jesus Christ, that is almost 50,000 views. Hi. <laughs> so if you're doing something that requires more information than just your subscriber count, just go digging around. I'm sure YouTube has some kind of other API that gives you a lot more information, but I just need the subscriber count. So now that we know that works, and yes, it does work live. So for demonstration purposes, I changed the, uh, the sleep time here to just 10 seconds. So here I am on another account, subscribe to my channel. I know, cringe. Uh, if I unsubscribe, yes please, and then that should update within uh, 10 seconds. There it is. That makes me feel just a tiny bit sadder. So let's subscribe again and wait 10 seconds. Tea break. Beautiful, we're back to 420. Great, so now that we know it all works, let's uh, design a cute little case for it. I finished making the enclosure it's definitely not my best work, it's very basic, but everything fits inside snugly. So whilst this is printing, let's do some soldering. Okay, my, uh, my little 3D case has finished printing. Uh, this got a little bit scuffed, but it should be okay. It really isn't my best work, but um, it'll work for now. I'll give it a little bit of a sanding because I'm not fond of the, uh, the print bed texture on the front of it. Uh, I've got this little lid here as well that fits in here, fits pretty snugly. It, it's a bit spongy in the middle just because I didn't give it any support there, but I think it will work. Right, let's give this a little bit of a sanding. Right, the sanding took a little bit longer than I wanted it to. It's not the best finish but I think from the front it looks fine uh, I did also want a really nice and snug fit for this because there's nothing else holding it in so I actually printed it a tiny bit smaller so that I can sand it down a little bit and there you go that's a perfect fit now this should just fit in the back here I put the screen in the wrong way around so the cable goes in there permanently now I can just push this in and I can screw on this uh, this little lid in here. If I can find tiny enough screws. Now be honest, these are not the nicest screws. You know what, I think two screws is enough to hold that in there. Um, and yeah, there it is. It looks pretty neat. Let's uh, plug it in and see if it still works. There we go, it still works. It's showing my uh, current subscriber count, which has increased since I looked at it last. I'm panicking. There is currently a lot of people subbing to my channel. Thank you all but I'm not used to the attention. I'm freaking out. Uh, let's go mount this on my uh, monitor.
So that's it for today's video. Thank you so much for coming along. If you are one of the many people that has subscribed, thank you so much. Uh, shoot me a comment. I reply to all of them. I'm always happy to answer questions. If you have any extra change, I, uh, I have a Patreon where you can get exclusive content and videos like stupidly way earlier than I post them on YouTube. I have a release schedule for YouTube. Patreon gets them as soon as I'm finished editing them. Thank you again very much for coming and I will see you in the next video. Ooh.